families and friends, I'm Erin Palmer, School Occupational Therapist, and I'm so happy to see you again today. I hope you're doing well and staying nice and cozy and dry during this very rainy week. <laughs> and I also hope that you're having some good times together and staying safe and healthy. I want to take some time to say a special hello to my 105 friends. Hi, friends. Hi. Can you say hi, Miss Erin? Hi, Miss Erin. Hi. Thank you for joining me today. Today, families and friends, we are going to incorporate this week's insect or bug theme um, with some fun activity ideas. And we're also going to be spending most of our time talking about cutting or scissor skills. Um, in early childhood, this is the time when we you know, begin to practice scissor skills and a lot of my friends still need some hands-on support in this area and that's okay. But we have some great activities with both um, paper and some other materials that you can use at home to give it a try. Um, and I do just wanna mention that of course, as I'm sure you already know, Safety is our number one priority when we're using scissors. We always want to make sure um, that our children are being supervised um, and assisted when using scissors and that scissors are being stored in a safe place that they can't get into um, when they're not using them with you. And then of course, when we're handling the scissors, you know, we just want to make sure that they're not um, handling the blades. So I just have to say that. Um, but let's kind of get started. First, I want to talk about different types of scissors and then um, some of our activities, okay? So families, um, in Miss Kendall and Team 105's kit, um, there was a pair of loop scissors. And so they might have a yellow handle, they might have a red or a different color handle, but they will look like this, where there is a loop on the end of the scissors. And these are what we're gonna be using today. Um, and loop scissors are a really great starting scissor for our friends because they um, require less hand strength, coordination, kind of motor planning than your standard student scissor. So we're just gonna talk about that for a minute. Um, you can see that you just put your hand on the outside, right? Maybe this angle is a little bit better. On the outside of the blades, no matter what type of scissor we're using, we always want our thumb to be up or on top. I talk about that a lot with my friends, thumbs up. We often want to cut sideways, but thumbs up. And my friends might need some hands-on assistance to position their thumb and their fingers correctly, and that's okay. With these scissors, you can squeeze, and we say, cut, open, and cut. You'll notice that when you try it, squeezing, the scissors will help open themselves. So um, the strength required to use these really involves more the squeeze than the release. That release is actually pretty tricky um, for a lot of students. And so that's something that, you know, we do work on developing over time. But um, so that's a couple ways that these scissors are a little bit easier to use. As the parent, your hand might be on top of your child's hand. Um, if they are keeping their fingers and thumb in the same correct position, you might be able to kind of provide your support more at the back of the loop where you can help them squeeze and open. Okay, so that's loop scissors. They, you may have seen um, some that come in a little bit of a smaller size. Sometimes I use these with students. They have less of a release. So even though they're smaller, sometimes they're a little trickier but that's okay. Um, kind of where we go from there, how we um, often progress, would be to a pair of safety scissors or what we call spring assist scissors. And these you know, look like your standard scissors with the um, two holes or openings, one for your fingers, one for your thumb, and where you open and close, right? But 
They also have a little feature, usually that can be kind of turned on or off, that acts as a spring. So you still have to squeeze, but the scissors help open, right? That release is assisted. And um, that, again, it kind of makes the whole cutting sequence a little bit easier, right? But after we gain some practice with these, eventually, um, and this is kind of a just for your information, we often progress to um, these type of scissors, which are just our standard student scissors. They often have a rounded blunt tip, which I recommend, um, two holes, one for thumb, one for fingers. And here, the user has to do all of the work themselves. They have to be able to squeeze and release. Um, and so that's what we're working toward. But no matter what kind of scissors we're using, one thing that we'll keep emphasizing is that our thumb goes up, right? Thumbs up, thumb on top. So we don't want to see our thumb down here, no. We don't we want to see our thumb on the side, no. We want to see our thumbs up. Friends, can you show me thumbs up? Yeah, thumbs up. Good job. Okay, so all that to say, um, a really great warm-up and fun way to practice some cutting is with Play-Doh. I just love to use Play-Doh for a lot of my friends. It's so enjoyable um, and it's a great sensory experience. It also gives an opportunity to work some of those hand muscles. Um, and so today I'm going to pull out a little Play-Doh and show you how you can um, do some cutting. And sometimes I like to warm up with Play-Doh before we get to paper because it's a different sensory experience. It helps us kind of um, zone in on what we're doing a little bit and gives a good warm up. Um, Excuse me. Okay, so with our Play-Doh that we have here, um, I, I should do a Play-Doh video. I just love it so much and try to incorporate it in a lot of different ways. Um, but one thing that we can do, speaking of our insect theme, is to make a worm with our Play-Doh. Um, and a lot of times with Play-Doh, I make it and then my friend has to make it so that um, I'm demonstrating and they're taking in what I just did and trying it out for themselves. Sometimes with assistance, of course, which is fine. So I just made a snake using flat hands and rolling. If I can use two hands, that's even better. Friends, do you think you could try that? We're gonna roll our snake or our, our, I guess I should say our worm, right? Rolling it out. Good. Good job. Okay, that's a very nice worm. Now, we're gonna practice cutting. Um, I'm actually gonna take my worm, make him a little bit shorter. Don't worry, it's okay if um, families, you're helping hold the Play-Doh, that's okay. A lot of my friends are not yet holding the Play-Doh, the paper, whatever it is that they're cutting and cutting at the same time. For most students in 105, I am holding or stabilizing um, the material while they're cutting. So, just so you know. So we wanna hold and get our hand ready. Open and cut. Right, oh, there we go, right? So our thumb is up and that's just it. We're just gonna try to open and cut. Oh, good job. Open and cut. That's usually how I cue. Some people cue open and close, um, but I try to kind of emphasize that the, the close is the cutting part. So open, and here I'm, I'm really feeding it right into there. Open and cut. Sometimes it's a little tricky if you're helping hold the hand and helping hold um, the Play-Doh or the paper, but just do the best you can. And the sensory kind of experience of cutting Play-Doh 
is is really cool. I think it's kind of a fun feeling. Open and cut. Good job. So that is a great warm up, and you could certainly just continue um, with that or give it a few tries. Sometimes I like to make a pancake with my play-doh. This is where I'm trying to get my friends again to have a flat hand and a bush, 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 push, push, really pushing down, pressing, putting some weight into it. They can stand up and do that. It's a great way to put some pressure into their arms to kind of help um, activate the muscles and try to um, increase some tone there. So here I have my pancake, and again, same thing. Open and cut, open and cut. Oh, good job. And then we just continue that a couple times. Open and cut, open and cut. Good. With the pancake, it's a little bit easier to cut through because it's thinner, but it's longer, right? Um, and so kind of too, at this stage of the game, we're working a lot on snipping, so just that motion that open and close and trying to do it in um, making consecutive snips. So a lot of times friends will start with being able to make one or maybe two snips, but we're working toward making consecutive snips where we have the hand strength coordination to kind of um, keep going, right? And then the idea of cutting on a line um, also begins to be incorporated, but we know that our friends might need quite a bit of help with that still, and that's okay, that's okay. Okay, so that was our Play-Doh. Um, now you, you may see that I have food here, and it's not because I'm hungry, but because if you um, wanted to, you could also incorporate cutting of foods, and that might sound a little silly or, um, you know, a little bit out there, but if you have clean scissors, which I do here, I wanna make sure that they're very clean, just like you would clean, um, you know, a spoon or a fork, right? You can try cutting some different foods, and this might even be a fun way to explore foods that are new to your child, or that you're trying um, to get them you know, to either explore by looking, tolerate touching them, smelling, um, maybe even tasting, right? So I have both soft and crunchier foods here and I'm just gonna show you, like I have a green bean and you would just do open and cut. Oh, that's it, right? And I have a carrot that I already sliced kind of thin. Open and cut and I might smell it. Look at it, talk about the color. Oh, it's orange. Carrot tastes kind of sweet. Um, it's crunchy. You know, you can always sort of expand from there, right? It doesn't have to be all about the cutting. Um, if you have soft foods, I actually prefer spaghetti noodles for this, but I didn't have any, so um, I am using something a little smaller pasta, but it's cooked pasta, open and cut. And kind of that feeling for a lot of students is really fun. It's similar to that Play-Doh feeling, open and cut, good. And then, and last I also have some banana, again, a soft food, open and cut. Ooh, that was hard, cut, right? Um, and some cheese, this gives new meaning to cutting cheese, right? Open and cut, open and cut. There you go. And cheese is nice because again, it's a little bit flatter and a little bit longer. Um, and you can see with most of these, it's just a simple one or two snips um, will get you across the item. And then you have a finger food. So if your child is eating a finger food, um, then there you go. And of course, with all foods, you wanna be sure to supervise them. Um, and you know, you wanna be watching and make sure that it's something that they can have and you know, just that they're being safe around the food. Okay, so that was another kind of fun um, 
sensory cutting activity that you might want to try at home. I'm going to put these food scissors away. Um, another fun sensory, maybe the pink will show up better. Um, if you happen to have straws at home, these are just plastic straws. I know um, you might use paper too, but plastic straws can be really fun to cut because they tend to fly everywhere and they're nice and long. So especially for students who might be um, a little bit afraid of holding and cutting at the same time, a straw can be really great for that because there's a lot of distance between one end that they're holding and the cutting end. So here I am, same thing, hand around the scissors, hand is around, thumb is up, open and cut, ooh, <laughs> and you can see, sure enough, that straw flew everywhere, open and cut, so that can be really fun, open and cut, okay, I'm having too much fun. And you can see and then it's always nice to be able to go and pick up your pieces of straw using if you can you know a pinching fingers right um, okay so now we're gonna move into a few more materials and then we'll get into our paper at home we have tin foil this is also really fun. Um, I recommend kind of starting with a smaller piece. We'll talk about that too with our paper. Is because most of our friends are just making a few snips at a time, we try to make the paper a little bit shorter, right? Okay, so tin foil. On tin foil, you can try, especially with a permanent marker, um, but I'm just going to use. A regular marker. Oh, I made a line. And so when we do have a line, I always like to say, oh, friends, where's the line? Show me the line. Is it here? No. Is it here? No. Is it there? Yes. That's the line. Oh, good job. Let's trace the line. So then we find the line and we trace it. Here's the line, it goes here, right? And then with tin foil, which is super fun to cut, it tends to sort of stay um, straight, which is really nice because not all paper will do that. And it makes a cool sound and then of course it looks really shiny. So you're getting um, some different sensory experiences there. So here I am, open and cut. Open and cut. And with most things, um, as we're cutting across, you may have to help your child kind of push forward. Tin foil can be a little tricky with that, but we're going with it. Open and cut. There we go. And that's how we would cut some tin foil. So that can be another fun material to practice with. Um, craft foam. This is just something if you happen to have at home. I know not a lot of people might have this, but the sensation, a lot of my students love the feeling of cutting craft foam. Um, so what I might do is sort of pre-cut as the grown-up, a little piece, right? Again, I can make my line. Even if my child is not cutting on the line, just beginning to like orient to the idea of here's a line. Where's the line? Oh, there's the line. Feel the line. Oh, good job. Right? And then same thing. Thumb is up. Hand is around. And I don't think I talked about this, but when we're cutting, um, often I am sitting directly behind or just off to the side of my student. And the paper is always such that they are cutting away from their body straight forward, okay? Um, occasionally up, but always away. We try to not practice going cutting sideways, which a lot of friends wanna do, but cutting forward, 
away from the body. So if you can, you know, try to arrange yourselves and your materials so that um, they're getting some practice cutting forward. Okay, open and cut. If you're cutting the foam, I like it too. Open and cut. Okay, so again, these are just some sensory ideas um, to make, you know, cutting extra fun and a little bit, um, you know, more uh, engaging maybe than just straight uh, paper practice. But I am going to talk now about the cutting sheets. So if your cutting sheet looks something like this, right? What I would recommend, especially for my little ones, um, would be as the grown up or the adult, cutting that sheet in half. Oh, because now it's a little bit shorter, right? It's a little bit shorter, it's a little bit smaller. And it'll actually give us kind of in a way double the practice if, if you want to. Um, and then what I like to do is, you know, we can orient again to that line, right? Oh, let's find the line. Asking our friends, either with a marker or a crayon. Oh, can you show me the line? There it is, let's make the line. Here we are practicing pre-writing strokes again. Big line down. Oh, good job, very nice. Now, let's cut. Same thing, I'm cutting, I guess it's open and cut, open and cut, cutting across, good job, right, there we are, we need our cuts. Now, to get into our bug theme, I'm going to make a little bug, we'll make our line. down. And why am I making only one line at a time? You don't have to. You could maybe make all the lines at the same time, you know, make one and the next one. But I'm really trying to kind of highlight this one particular line as the one that we're cutting on now. Um, so that's just kind of my reasoning for doing that. So there is my bug. I think Okay, I just made my little bug. Let's see if we can get to the bug. Can we do it? I think so. So here now we have the line, right? And if possible, the line is really thick. Um, the line might be a nice bright color, or it might be really dark. So again, it's standing out and we have a target. So we're really trying to get there. If this is too far, then you could always cut the paper again, make it shorter, or um, you could move your target kind of to the middle. So, all right, here we go. Open and cut, open and cut, right? Oh, here we go, yay, we did it. We did it. So we cut all the way to the bug. That was great. Now to kind of take it another step, um, we're gonna make our line. If you can, you know, you're making these lines together. And now we're gonna put bugs all on the line. So we're gonna put bugs all the way down. Um, and this is really fun. This is a great way um, to practice some of those pinch skills and finger isolation. Um, and so for friends who are able to independently peel their stickers and put them on, that's great. They should start at the top always, right? Where do we start? We start at the top here, yeah. For friends who are needing some help with peeling, you can try folding the paper so that it just sticks up a little bit and then they can kind of pinch and put on trying to get on that line we're trying to coordinate 
what our eyes are seeing, where our hands are going. Um, for friends where that's a little bit too tricky, that's okay. I might take the sticker, hold it out to them, and then they can take it. Or if that's just not working, that's totally fine. I'm gonna take my sticker, fold it, so that it's just half on. And then I'm asking my friends, can you push down? Push, oh, good job, sorry. Push down so that I put it on part way and then they just have to push down. So however your little one is able to participate in um, putting the sticker on and pushing down, that's great. That's great, that's you know what we're going for. It doesn't have to be a certain um, you know, there's no one right way to do this at all. Okay, so I have my bugs here. I'm going to add some legs just to make it fun. You can also incorporate a little bit of body awareness if you wanted to. Right? Like, oh, let's talk about our bugs. Our bugs have, oh, I have two eyes. Where are your eyes? Where are your eyes? Here are my eyes. Show me your eyes. And kind of do things like that. Oh, this bug has how many legs? One, two, three, four. He has four legs. How many legs do you have? One, two, two legs. So, you know, we're trying to work in, um, all kinds of different things, you know, at least um, during our sessions and, and feel free to do that at home. So it, it can be, make things more interesting. It can be really fun and it can also be educational. All right, so now we have a whole line of bugs. Oh, they're crawling. We're gonna cut on our line. Thumb is up. I, yep, thumb is up. Open and cut now. This might be a little bit harder because the stickers make you use some more oomph. Cut, cut, right? But that's okay. It can be really fun. Good job. Very nice. If you um, didn't want to use stickers but you're looking for an alternative, painter's tape, one of my Favorite supplies, of course, um, you can do that as well. So putting on some tape on the line. I like to wrap it around. This does require a little bit more strength, but it can be really nice practice. So same thing, we're just going open and cut all along that line. Good job. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so these are all different ways that you might do some cutting at home. So here, we only used half of our paper. Um, the cutting template, you could go ahead and another time or another day, you know, try a couple more. Um, maybe you even just try one or two, and then a few days later, you try another one or two. It doesn't have to be a whole 30-minute um, session or anything like that. A few minutes here and there is just a really great way, um, you know, to, to practice these skills. So if you are interested in um, maybe working on some activities to help strengthen kind of that open and closed motion, if you have closed pins at home, these are always great. Um, and I like to actually put them around like a, a container and see if we can't take them off. That's a little bit easier first, and then working up to putting them on. Um, and so that I think is our activity for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, it's such a pleasure to be part of the 105 team. Please feel free to reach out anytime if I can support you and your child. And um, thank you again for sharing some of those photos. It's so nice to see pictures of my friends at home. I'm thinking of you, I'm missing them, and um, you know, I hope we can see each other again soon. So take care, thanks so much, bye-bye.